What's going on guys, Ness here. Today what I'm going to be doing is hacking a PSP. I'm going to be installing custom firmware on a PlayStation Portable, which will enable it to play homebrew, emulators, and run backups of actual PSP games. This PSP was donated to me by a good friend and coworker. It wasn't really in working order, but a few minor repairs, and it was up and running. The model PSP that I have in front of me is model 1001, the old fat model, but this hack will work on a PSP 2000, 3000, as well as a PSP Go, only the process is slightly different for the PSP Go. So if you have a model 1000, 2000, or 3000, you can actually follow these steps right here, and it should work just fine. The custom firmware that I'm going to be installing is 6.60 Pro C. Now I understand it's a bit of a dated custom firmware, there are some newer ones out there, like 6.61 Infinity. But I've hacked plenty of PSPs with this custom firmware, and the process is super simple, easy to follow, and it works just fine. I actually really like this custom firmware, which is why I'm sticking with it. Alright, first let's go over what you're going to need in order to perform this hack and install this custom firmware. First, you're going to need an official Sony 6.60 firmware, which I'll put a link in the description below. Then you're going to need the 6.60 Pro C custom firmware, which I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. So once you got both files, you should put them in a separate folder, and it should look something like this. You should have one file that says eboot in all caps .pbp, and another zip file that says 6.60 Pro C. First thing you're going to want to do is extract the contents of the zip file. Then the next thing you're going to want to do is create a folder called update in all caps. Once you create that folder, go ahead and drag the eboot.pbp file into the update folder. So now what you should have is a folder called update in all caps, a folder called PSP in all caps, and another folder that says SE plugins. So then you're going to go ahead and right click the folder that says update and either copy or cut it. Then go ahead and click inside the PSP folder and then click inside the game folder and you're going to paste the update folder inside the game folder. So inside the game folder there should be four folders. One that says CIPL flasher, another one that says fast recovery, another one that says pro update and then the update folder that you just pasted inside of here. So now we're going to go ahead and connect our PSP to the computer. And then we're going to take the folder that says PSP and the other folder that says SE plugins and just drag them to the root of our memory stick. If you get a message asking to replace any files or folders, just select yes for all. Now back over on our PSP, let's head over to the Games tab, go down to the Memory Stick, and then click the PSP Update version 6.60. Let it do its work, let it update the PSP, and it'll reboot the PSP once it's finished. Once it's done, you should be on Sony's official version 6.60. Go ahead and head over to your system settings and confirm this. Once that's done, go back to your games tab, go back to the memory stick and click the 6.60 Pro C update file. Once inside, go ahead and hit X to launch the custom firmware. Let it do its work. And that's it, guys. You're running custom firmware 6.60 Pro C. Go ahead and head over to your system settings to confirm this. Now that your PSP is fully hacked and you can run homebrew emulation as well as playing ISO backups, 
I highly recommend getting one of these Memory Stick Pro Dual to micro SD card adapters. I'm able to put 32 gigabytes inside my PSP and I have a ton of games loaded onto it. Now that you're done with this whole process, you could go ahead and delete the PSP update version 6.60 file. And if you ever hard reset the PSP, use the Pro Fast Recovery application and it'll take you right back to your custom firmware. So now that your PSP is fully hacked, go ahead and game away. PSP is one of my favorite, if not my absolute favorite handheld console. And it's due largely in part to the fact that these custom firmwares give it so much versatility. This console is over 10 years old and I still play it on a regular basis. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy. Until next time, this is Ness, signing out.